Hello and welcome to the Lyman Wolf Podcast. I am your host, Raceland, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Nate. How you doing, bud? Pretty good, yourself? I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay. Um, getting into a new topic like always, and this week we're going to be talking about video games that deserve a movie. And what I mean by that is, this was my pick, and I wanted to talk about video game that don't have movies yet. A lot of times video game movies don't turn out well, we've seen plenty of examples of that. So I'm hoping we can find some video games that will get some good movies, or some ideas for them to, to make into movies. Okay, okay. Yeah, because, what, real quick, what, what's a video game movie you actually like that's already been made? Uh, World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft? Yeah, I never Warcraft saw that, movie. but I know a lot of fans said they didn't like it because they didn't like that it didn't have nothing to do with the game. So, yeah, it it changed quite a bit of stuff to it. But as a movie, I still enjoyed it. As I'd, a fan, yeah, I wish they would have like kept to the original stuff. But. Well, I got a couple that I think are actually pretty good. Obviously, the most obvious one is Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, come on, that movie's awesome. True. That is probably like that's probably the pinnacle of all video game movies, in my opinion. That or um, Detective Pikachu. Yeah, that was good. And another one that doesn't get talked about much. People don't like this movie, but the Prince of Persia movie was actually pretty good. I did enjoy it. I definitely understand why people. Oh, definitely. Weren't happy with it. Uh, but as a movie. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good movie. Yeah, it, it wasn't too bad. But let's get into our list. So let's get started with, uh, we're going to do our top five, right? You got five? Yes, I do. All right. So since this is my topic, I'm going to go first. All right. And the first one I'm going to be picking is the video game franchise Kirby. Okay. This is one of the few good ones on my list that is going. I would prefer to be animated. I only got one animated one on my list, and this is it. So... Yeah. Kirby had a TV series back in, like, 2001, but I'd love for it to get an actual, like, reboot movie. Kind of like what they're doing with the Super Mario Brothers that's coming out in a couple weeks here. Yeah. I, I'd i love to see it in that new style of animation. Now, are you a big Kirby fan? I played, like, one or two games. Okay, uh, yeah, I love the Kirby franchise. I like the character a lot. The, the unstoppable, the unstoppable like wormhole that is Kirby. Yes, the <laughs> strongest video game character to ever exist. Yeah, people are like, Kirby. who's the strongest video game character? They're like, obviously Kratos or like Goku from the Dragon Ball games or so and so. And it's like, no, it's actually that little pink ball Gumball. over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that little dude is unstoppable. Break a planet with a fist, uh, swallows whole galaxy kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just a little innocent little pink ball. So for what I want for this video game, since it's an animated animated uh, movie, is I was thinking making the movie more like an original story-based thing. It's kind of like have it be its own story based on the game okay. instead of it trying to follow one of the many tales of Kirby it already has. All right, yeah. I think it would be a cool movie. Now, Kirby doesn't really talk much in the games at all. He just Yay. is like, I, hey, I. So I figured it would be better to have the movie, because in the TV show, uh, they had a bunch of side characters that would talk, and they would be the main focus of the TV show, while mm -hmm. Kirby was the main character just fighting bad guys. Mad so I would, yeah. Yeah, I would love to see them focus a lot on the side characters if they go the route with. Kirby sticking to just making little squeaky sounds. It's like a one punch man. Kirby I guess so. <laughs> so as a as for the like the voice actors and stuff for this movie, I was thinking for Kirby himself, like I said, doesn't talk much. What about do you know the voice actress? She's in does tons of cartoons, Tara <clears throat> Strong. Do you know who that is? Uh, I, the name sounds very familiar. Tara I think Strong you might does, have yeah, she does characters like Raven. She does, uh, yeah. uh, Buttercup or not Buttercup, one of the Powerpuff Girls, stuff like that. She does a ton of voice actors. Basically, Butter. any of the cartoons from the '90s of your childhood, she more than likely voiced them. Yeah, and I think she would do really good job of making like the whole eye sounds and stuff like that. Okay, okay, I can see that. 
Um, and then for Meta Knight, because Meta Knight obviously is a major character in the series, it, yeah, I would more like a dark and gruff thing. Well, did you ever watch the? Did, have you ever seen the TV show from like the early two thousands? I vaguely remember it. So but not by much. Meta Knight in the TV show, he was had a Hispanic background. His voice was like, he kind of like reminded you of like Mask of Zorro kind of thing. Okay. So I figured Antonio Banderas would be perfect for Meta Knight. All right. Give him the old Puss in Boots treatment. Right, exactly. Okay. And then for King DDD, I got to go with the most recent thing we've seen him in, voice actor wise. He looks like he's going to do a great job as Bowser. I'm thinking Jack Black for King DDD. Okay, yeah. I mean, Jack Black's. A good actor and a good voice actor, I think. Yeah, so, yeah, he does a really good job with a lot of his animated stuff. Like, like look uh, at Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, and a super underrated game, Brutal Legend. He was amazing in it. You know, that has been on my... I even have it downloaded to my Xbox, and I still have not played it. Brutal Legend is a tough game to recommend because, like, I love the game, and I'm... I am not a music fan or anything, really. Like, I love, I enjoy music, but I don't know much. It is a very tough sell because it changes gameplay styles. You know what? I was honestly thinking about putting Br Brutal Legend on this list, but I was like, I've never played it, so I wouldn't be feel right. And I feel like if anybody picks it, it would be Nate who would put it on so, this list. I, too was very close to putting it on this list. <laughs> I knew it. My only problem is I would want Jack Bla I, I would want it to be a live action film because I would oh, love to okay. see them be able to pull that into live and see how they do that. Although an but animated also, film would be really cool too. Oh yeah. Well I feel like that would be the only way to go with it because I absolutely would want Jack Black to be the voice. Oh I'm that would you be have to have Jack Black as the voice. That would be the issue with it being live action because Jack Black is definitely not like big a muscular massive, guy. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's the lovable chunky guy that everybody loves. <laughs> yeah, so I don't like. I would love to see that, but it it was split, and I decided to go a different route with another with other movies. Okay, well, yeah, that's my that's my number five is Kirby, some form of Kirby. Honestly, right. if they do pick a game from like. A storyline from a game, The Amazing Mirror. It, this is a recommendation for anybody who hasn't played that game. It's for the Game Boy Advance. The Kirby okay. and the Amazing Mirror is my favorite Kirby game, and that would be a cool storyline if they go that route. <coughs> so that's my number five. All right. Uh, since you oh first uh, animation style, what are you like two D or three D? I'm thinking the the style like Mario has in the trailer. So like three D. Three D. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I'm, since you started off with your animated movie, I will start with my animated movie as well. Oh, do you only have one? Yep, just one. That's what I got. Uh, real quick, can you guess? I, I want to see if you can oh, guess what let's mine Let's play this game, let's play this game. Yeah. What, what, what do you think is my animated movie, Grayson? Hmm, I don't know, dude, I can't even, <sighs> I don't know, I... Is it? Is it something to do with Fable? No. No. I. Did, can you give me a hint? Foul language. Oh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. There you go. Okay, that totally makes sense. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you uh, say foul language, I know exactly who it was. The greatest foul language, cute video game mascot character for that began in the Nintendo 64 era that tricked a lot of parents into letting their children play a game. Oh, it's for the N64. Oh, no big deal. Oh, it's it a must cute be little family friendly. Squirrel. Yeah. Look at those big doe eyes. Oh, it's Oh, this is super fine. Play the game. Big titty sunflowers drinking, hangover, uh death galore, <laughs> depression is hell. Yeah, like that. that great everything child child friendly as I'm hearing. I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so I went with Conker's Bad Fur Day, and okay. it is going to be a sequel to the video game. Or to, yeah, uh, to the video game. But people don't know who Conker is. Like now, me, I've never played yeah. the game. Here's the, here's the brilliance of that. 
the video game is basically Conker retracing his drunken night trying to get home. That's okay. it. Uh, so the movie, and it starts out with him, like, sitting on a throne, talking to the camera, like, bet you're wondering how I'm here. Oh, Emperor's I New sure Groove style. I am. Yeah, he's like, I have no clue, like, never thought I would be a king, and all of it was different just yesterday. Like, okay, interesting. So this one's going to start out exactly the same. It's going to show him on the throne. He's going to be like, yeah, guess what? I'm I'm still the king somehow. Not really sure what's going on, but uh yeah, I I rule. Um and then it's going to start veering into its own storyline. So spoilers real quick. For oh, the come video on. Game. See that No, for anybody Okay, first off, if you haven't played the game, it's on the Nintendo 64. You're probably not going to be playing this game. You could. You could have a Nintendo 64. I think know. it is part of the rare replay for the Xbox. Rare replay. Uh, like I could go to my Xbox right now and find it on the shop. Yes. No crap. So. Really? Yes. I might have to look into that. Yeah. The remastered version for when they made it for the Xbox. Uh, so yeah, it it is. I highly recommend the game. It's so a fun if that's game. true, anybody with a, an Xbox out there, go check it out before Nate ruins it by exactly. spoiling by spoiling Pause the this video. Go play the entire game. Come back and then finish this video. Uh, all right. So the plot for the movie is that Conker is trying to find a way to bring back his girlfriend. Uh, he wants, he was super depressed that she died, even though it's super implied that she cheats on him throughout the entire thing. Okay. Uh, he's like, I, I want Barry back. Like, I bring her back. And he gets help from old friends and old enemies alike, while also taking on the new challenge, the moles, as they try to take over the kingdom. Oh, snap. Uh, so the moles are actually a new creation for the movie. They are not a part of the video game or anything. That's purely for the movie. Uh, so now we're going into the cast. And keep in mind, a lot of these members are going to have to have their voices altered somewhat to be like a little bit higher pitched, like helium almost. So we're talking Alvin and the Chipmunk style. Sort of, yeah. Because that's what a lot of the characters in the video game, a lot of their voices are very high pitched. Yeah, because aren't they like squirrels or something like that? Yeah, there's squirrels, teddy bears, uh, bees, wasps, pitchforks, shit. Uh, literal like shit? Giant... Yes, they're... a boss is a literal pile of shit called the Great Mighty Pooh, um, who sings opera. Oh my gosh. This is going to be like a sausage party style movie. <laughs> yes, actually. That was partially the inspiration for this. Because when, and I will say, I have uh, our friend Ty to thank for convincing me to do this because we were talking and I was like, I, I really want to do make this part of my movies, but I really do not think it would fit well with today's society it would it'd be super raunchy it'd be super uh <laughs> offensive to a lot of people have you never seen some netflix original movies like there's so many raunchy comedies out there though yeah that's what that's what ties like i mean dude there there's still a lot of stuff out there that's super raunchy and offensive like people people like understand. that stuff man yeah if you go so, into the movie knowing that it's gonna be so, like raunchy as hell yeah it's fine we just have to do better marketing than they did for the N64 and let people know that this is not a child-friendly movie. You mean movie. have, like, the rated M logo, just, like, a tiny little thing in the corner? Yeah, like, no, do not take your kids to watch this hilarious cartoon. Have, uh, it, have the opening trailer be like, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and then giant letters, NOT FOR CHILDREN! <laughs> exactly. Uh, so the main character, Conker, is going to be played by James Marsden. Why do I know that name? It sounds so familiar. Well, he is a character who always loses the girl in almost... Or he's an actor who always loses the girl in almost every movie he plays in. Oh! Isn't he Cyclops in the yeah, X-Men movie? <laughs> yep. I knew it! 
I was like, he that dude also... sounds. I was like, that guy sounds so familiar. Wasn't he a Sonic? Yep, Tom. Oh, was, the Donut was... Lord. Yes. So uh, it was funny. That guy would I would pick for Conquer. Um, not because of like their voice would be this similar because they're really not. Like I said, we're going to have to change the voices slightly when we do this, or if we do this. Uh, and I like how I keep think, talking as if this is going to be done. Well, this will be. They're gonna, people, producers are going to listen to our podcast and take all of our ideas and make it a reality. You don't know that's exactly. going to happen. Exactly. Th- uh, thank you, thank you, producers, for uh, taking our time, crediting our inter- us. Yeah, this is our interview, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, but he does bring really good humor to his roles a lot of the time. And I think he would be able to do that with this character. Okay. The second one, Barry. The girlfriend who is dead. Uh, the movie would have flashbacks with her. In my head, Make her a there ghost. is... Well, sort of. A drunk oh, hallucination. <laughs> okay. No, like, she's not like an actual ghost, but she's a drunk hallucination that Conqueror sees every once in a while when <laughs> okay, he gets okay. straight up hammered. Uh... And she will be played by Reese Witherspoon. Okay, I, I know that name. Yes. And this the reason I picked her is because the character uh, Barry is, to me anyway, reminds me a lot of her character from Legally Blonde. Uh, okay. Very kind of ditzy, but also incredibly intelligent if you look past the pink sorority girl look. Nobody looks uh, past that. Yeah. Uh, Barry was a real work, like, she worked out a lot, she was a health nut, but she also seemed to get around a lot, like, like to a to lot take of a the... ca- Like, take a ta- taxi somewhere? Well, like, she, like, moving, like, Oh, she I thought you were getting, uh, a... I thought you were saying she was a whore. Oh, no, she is, or it's um, heavily implied, because, like, she meet or Conqueror sees her with this mob boss weasel... And he's like, Barry, Barry, it's me. And she looks at him and she's like, I do not know you. Because all because he's wearing a like caveman helmet looking thing that is just a hat. It doesn't cover his face or anything, but she does not recognize her boyfriend. <laughs> so it's the uh it's the Clark Kent effect. Exactly. And then later on, like the spoiler, we, like, spoiler, I thought spoiler, you said you didn't know her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Barry would be Reese Witherspoon. Then there was sort of the big bad of the game named the Panther King. He did that. That was it. Uh, he was just the title. Uh, Black the Panther. Panther Black Panther was taken. Uh, and Terry Crews is who I would pick. Perfect. For him. I don't know this character, but I love Terry Crews. Panther King is a very serious character with a very that's a, that just screams Terry Crews serious. <laughs> But with a very stupid problem. The whole point he has is that he wants his glass of milk. But every time he sets his glass of milk down on the table next to his throne, it falls off the table and shatters so he can never have his glass of milk. And it's because the table is missing a leg. That's it. And he can't figure it out. He's like... Oh, where's my where's the head research scientist of my kingdom to figure out this problem? And there's scientists. You know, I'm like, kind of glad I didn't play this game. No, it, it's a hilarious. Game. It sounds so stupid. So many references to like movies, Alien, Matrix, uh, Saving Private Ryan, like just a whole bunch of really goofy shit. Um, but anyway, Terry Crews definitely he's my Panther King. Then we have Professor Von Krippelspack. He is the weasel scientist. These names, and I, man. Yes. I I don't even know if I said that right. Like, it has been so long since I've played this game. I'm just saying about, like, how it pre- looks to me. Professor Von Krippelspack. Uh, played by Nick Kroll. I know that I name. Nick, Isn't I he Nick the Kroll. guy from New Girl? No. No? That, that is the character Nick. Oh. Uh... Nick Kroll is a comedian. I I, from, I I definitely know the name. Yeah, he he's from oh, a, he does a show oh, called Big Mouth. I know exactly who he is. He was the douche in um uh Parks and Rec. Yes, I do believe. He yeah, was he in plays that. the uh the ta- the the radio DJ the the douche. Uh, that's him. That is the character I would pick. 
Okay. For, or the actor for that character. Okay. Because I he from what I've seen, he does some pretty funny accents. He's and pretty funny. His humor, I think, would fit perfectly with this character because the character to the Panther King is like, yes, my lord, yes, my lord. The moment he turns his back, he's just constantly insulting the Panther, like, oh, fuck you for making me have to do this stupid ass shit. Fuck off. Like, uh, it, it, he's hilarious. <laughs> hey, then we got. Hey, watch your mouth. Think of the children. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then we got Birdie the Scarecrow. How many characters uh, you got over here, man? Uh, there are 11. Yeah. You're going to yep. go through all of these? Yep. But this is where I'm going to be like the flash round. Like we're going to go straight through. Them okay. Bird is a scarecrow. In the game, he's kind of like your helper. He t tells you, hey, press button B to do this. Like it was fourth wall breaking. He just like, do that. Press that button. Now you'll get it done. He's like, okay. Uh, and he somehow pops up everywhere on the map for you. Okay. Uh, he'll be played by John C. Riley. I, I know who that is. Yeah, I think he would be a very good drunk uh, scarecrow because that's what Birdie is. He's just a drunk scarecrow that, like he, his drunk hallucinations are the players. Yep. Um. Then we got death. Death is so when your character dies for the first time, you are introduced to the Grim Reaper with a gold tooth. Um, and he despises cats. He hates them with a passion because of their nine lives. He's like, those fucking hoity-toity cats think they can escape me, but just wait until their ninth life. I will make sure they I get them. Who's that? He'll be by? played by Will Ferrell. Okay. Uh, because this one, Will Ferrell's voice is definitely going to be super high-pitched because death is a high, really high-pitched thing. That's kind of what's comedy. He's super ominous, but he's like a super midget-looking short Grim Reaper dude. I don't think that's that, a preferred nomenclature. glitcher. Yeah, it's probably true. Um, he is just... It's hilarious. Then we've got Queen Bee. Kid played by Katie Seagal. From, okay. She played uh, Leela from Futurama. Okay, good good voice actors. Uh, King Bee. Played by Ed O'Neill. From... Modern Family, or as I know him from Married with Children. Both of those actors are Married with Children, by the way. Okay. They were husband and wife, which is kind of the reason why I picked being or the king and queen of the bees. Gotcha. Uh, then we got Frankie the Pitchfork, played by Adam Sandler. Uh, because Good Frankie luck getting the... all these big names, by the way. <laughs> right, like this is going to cost a shit ton of money. Uh, Adam Sandler Frankie... alone is probably like half your budget. Yeah. Just, and then he'll be like, we need to put some of my ideas into this and i'm like as yo long call as david ideas, spade and <laughs> yeah <laughs> like let's bring in rob schneider kevin james <laughs> like, right my all of your ideas are great nate cut them all bring in my crew <laughs> yeah we're, we're bringing in the happy madison productions right now <laughs> uh then we got rodent who is like the most innocent of squirrels in a war that is like horrible and he's like, I've got this armor that's supposed to like protect me. The guy said it will save me from any bullets. And then gets blown up. Uh, the armor protects him, but he's just, he's like the hero you want to have. He's kind of like Steve Rogers before he became Captain America. A nerd? But, yeah. But a very heroic nerd. <laughs> uh, played by Dave Franco. Okay, I like that actor a lot. And then the new character for this movie alone, the Mole Queen, played by Zendaya. Okay. I like Zendaya. Hey, I think at she... least you named a bunch of all the actors. I know these these people, so that's helpful. I, I did try for this one at least to pick characters or actors that you would have an idea to. Uh, because all these... your other movies are going to be like, you know, that one guy from that one thing. I am kind of afraid to, about that for the rest of these movies. That's okay. But that is all of the characters for this movie. Okay. Well, it sounds and, like an interesting uh, P PG movie. Uh, maybe, yeah, this, maybe, maybe Y17. Yeah, this is going to be like <laughs> rated R. Hard R. <laughs> hard R. <laughs> and that'll, that'll be even in the trailer like, hard R. <laughs> exactly. Like, this is going to be... Uh, blood, guts, sex. It's all, it's all still going to be cutie animation. <laughs> it's going to make me think of that YouTube channel. Of, uh, what was it called? 
like happy playtime or something like that. It was like happy tree friends. That's it. Happy tree friends. Yeah, you knew exactly what I was talking about. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but this will be three D, not two D. Yeah. But yes, exactly. Very similar <laughs> to that. Like really cutesy style, but extremely graphic depictions of violence, sex, drugs, and alcohol. Cool. All right, so that moves on to my pick for my number four. And my number four is the game Far Cry 3. Have you ever played that game? Yes, I believe so. That I is the all, all Cry, of them. Yeah, Far Cry 3 was the one where... Uh, well, I'll, I'll get into it. The, ga- the So the movie is basically going to be the plot of the, of the game. It's okay. the, the, the game literally sets up the perfect movie plot. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a group of friends going vacation, skydiving, and accidentally land on a pirate territory. The main character is Jason Brody. He has to attempt to free his friends from captivity. He gets some training from the native tribe that wants the pirates to leave the island. So basically, okay. if you are a ter- a, a tor- not terrorist, a tourist, tourist, yeah, <laughs> fighting terrorist, <laughs> uh, and. So natives are like, we're going to give you skills to kill these guys to get the hell off of our island. And that's basically the story. And you go around just killing bad guys and defeating camps and stuff. The game is Uh, absolutely amazing if you haven't played it. Yeah, that is... I love the Far Cry franchise. I love it. It is a game, like, I would say it would be super easy to make into a movie. Yeah. But also super easy to fuck up. Oh, uh, definitely. Like, but but out of all the Far Cry games, I think number three is the best way to a, 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 a make an adaptation for a movie yeah, because all the other games, all the other games are great, but they are a lot more complex and more complex than this one is. I think the problem that would come if it was being made would be they would try to change it and change the tone of the movie. Which is what usually happens in video game movies. You need to just keep the tone the exact place. Exactly. Yeah, you need to keep it violent, action, bloody. Like, you need to keep... Don't don't PG-13 this, man. Look what they did to my awesome Venom movie that I was so looking forward to. I still like those movies, but imagine those movies as rated R. Keep the source material (laughs) and make it rated R. Yeah. No, I I would agree with this one. This one in... This would be like a home run, like an yeah. easy home run. Easy home run. And but as for the confidence the, is what scares me. And for the actors, so this is all, okay. fr- from my list from now on is all live action. So yes, in here. So for the main character Jason Brody, I was thinking Chris Pine. You know who Chris Pine is, right? Yes. He's you know from Star Trek and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he would be a pretty decent Jason Brody. I mean, he's a little older. I think. Yeah, Jason, I say. I think Jason Brody's supposed to be early 20s. Exactly. And I think uh, Chris Pine is like late 30s or early 40s. Maybe they could, like, you know, age up the character a little bit. But. Yeah. I don't know. That was the first character that came to my mind. I think mean, he looks like I him. Mean, he, he does a good. He's good at action stuff. He is. And I, he, he does visually kind of look like the character. Yeah. I would, I would agree with this. We just got to get ourselves a time machine. Yeah, a younger Chris Pine is what we need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, d- and then for the main, I only got the two characters, Jason Brody and the main villain, because okay. I wasn't going to go into details of all the other minor characters. Voss, he's like the most well-known villain of all of Far, uh, Far Cry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like one of the most heavily promoted for that game. And you know who Voss is. Yes. So I was thinking Michael Mando. Do you know who that is at all? I do not. Okay, so he's no he's most known for playing Nacho Vargo Varga, I might butcher that, and Better Call Saul. But you might know him, Nate, as uh Mac Gargan, aka the Scorpion, from his very brief appearance in the Spider Man Homecoming movie. Do you remember at the very yeah. end of the movie he was in the jail cell and they were like talking to some prisoners and then the Scorpion guy? Mm-hmm. That is Michael Mando. He is also the guy who voices Voss in the video games. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I looked it up. And yeah. yeah, he was the... He's he the, did the promotion. Yeah. The market. He is the voice of Voss, and he looks like Voss. They based it on him. 
Like, he's literally the perfect character to play his character. Yeah. Okay. And, I mean, he's probably late 30s as well, so, I mean, if you age up the characters a little bit, Chris Pine and him kind of on the same path of, like, age group right there. Probably, yeah. So, I mean, hey, it, it could work. It could work. Let's see here. Michael Mando is 41 years old, and Chris, Chris Pine is Pine... probably... I'm going to guess 38. 42. Oh, okay, so they're both early 40s. So, yeah. if you just make the movie a little older, like, make them a tiny bit older... Instead then... of uh, college kids going to the island, it's more just friends going to... Bachelors. Kind of yeah. That could be it. I, it could work. Yeah, friends reuniting after a very long time. Yeah, change it. The, the, because, you know, the beginning of the game, like, the, the, the background, nobody cares about that. Oh. They care. They care about the action and getting off the island. People like me care. Lore, man. Lore and context. And in the movie or in the game, he basically <laughs> has to like ha try to save his brother, and yeah. that's that's a big big part of the game. So yeah, that's my number four is Far Cry Three. Okay. Uh, mine will be Dead Space. I know that. I know that game. I've never played it, but I know it. But this will be an original story told in the Dead Space universe. It okay. has nothing to do with the actual games other than the franchise. Like, it is being told from that universe. That makes sense. They've done that before. Um, mainly because uh, I love Dead Space games. I think... I, they were kind of my start into horror games, even though I didn't even realize I was playing a horror game when I played them. Uh, Ty is the one's like, Nate, maybe you just like horror when he found out. Man, until you crapped your pants and like, oh, this is horror. No, I wasn't very scared, and that's why I didn't think it was very... Like, I'm, I don't like things that scare me. Horror, I, I generally think, that scare me. This one didn't. It's, but it is space zombies. Uh, space mutated zombies that are... Supposed to be scary as heck, except for the exploding babies. Those are creepy as hell. Jesus. Um, so, about your movie. Yes. The movie uh, has three cast members. And the synopsis is a new story set in the universe. It is set on a military base that has been turned into the Necromorphs. And the timeline is that it's set during Dead Space 2. Okay. Um, all you dead, all you Dead Space fans out there know what he's talking about. I have no idea. It's mainly like after Dead Space One. That's when humanity has started to like realize, oh crap, the religion that has been going on, the markers that we have been building, the red markers that are based off the black markers, um, are turning people into zombies, the necromorphs, and so deadpool 2 or not deadpool, deadpool 2 oh sweet breaking that yeah. fourth wall <laughs> De yeah ryan reynolds is gonna no uh <laughs> he is not in my casting for any of this so dead so space funny. 2 is going to be three people on a military base that has been turned into necromorphs trying to get off the base and like get away from it basically it it is purely uh influenced on the movie's alien Okay. Because there's not that many like sci-fi horror films out there like Alien where you have the xenomorph. Um and then also The Thing. Wes Craven's The Thing. Oh, you said Thing, I thought Fantastic 4. <laughs> yeah, I I saw the look on your face. I'm like, I better clarify real quick. <laughs> Wes Craven's the thing. I'm like, oh, Ben Grimm, cool. <laughs> yeah. So it's these three people trying to get off the base and just survive. The three actors I got for this, for the three original characters for this, is the first character, Oliver Tom or Oliver Tomes. And these are names you just made up, aren't they? Yes, these are new characters for the movie specifically. Okay. Uh, he is a new soldier recruited onto the base. Uh, he has arrived like maybe a week ago, so he's still kind of learning the ropes around. Then you have, and he's played by Matt Bomer. Okay. Uh, I don't do you know, know that. that it, nope. I figured you might not recognize the name, but I'm fairly certain you'll recognize the character he plays, Larry from Doom Patrol. Oh, wait, Larry. Oh, I know who that is. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay. That that is Matt Bomer. Okay. Uh, okay. I've always liked the actor ever since I watched White Collar, and I love what he does in Doom Patrol. So I would love to see him get a like sort of main character role in a film. Okay, I like that. Uh, then we have Rachel Shannon. She is a scientist that works on the markers, uh, which they learn is a very bad thing because it messes with your minds and makes you turn into the xenomorphs and shit. Uh, played by Lauren Cohen from The Walking Dead. She played a character I know who named that is. Maggie. I yeah. know who Maggie is. Um, then the third character is Tobias James, a former member of the Church of Unitology. And he's played by Jamie Foxx. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and that, that's pretty much it. it. Those three characters all kind of meet at the base due to the various parts of their profession and ha have to get out and survive. Okay. That sounds like this a very is, Nate space game. This is a very horror space kind of thing that I'm trying to go for. Because, like I said, there haven't been too many movies that delve into space sci-fi horror like Alien does. And it's about time we get something new from Yeah, them. I agree. A little side tangent, though, speaking of aliens and stuff, I watched last night, I watched that Hulu original movie Prey, the yeah. new Predator movie. Yeah, what'd you think of it? Five out of five. Perfect. That was like my favorite Predator movie they've ever made. I think I gave it a, like three and a half out of five. Yuck, I can't believe you just did that. That was an amazing movie. It was a great movie, um, but there were like little tidbits of it that I was like, yeah. Oh. Well, anyways, yeah, that good movie, good pick. Uh I don't know if I'd see that in theaters. Probably not my style, but it sounds like something you'd enjoy. I'd drag you there. No, you wouldn't. Anyways, my number three is it could be really good or it could be really bad. Like, this is a hit or miss. Okay. And that is the mo making a movie based on Metroid. Okay. Speaking of space and aliens and stuff. Yeah. Uh, this would be... Obviously, heavily influenced on the games because the entire story of the games is all she's a bounty hunter fighting alien pirates and trying to stop invasions and stuff like that. So, what I was thinking for this movie is making it instead of ba so they have a game called uh, Metroid Other M, I think that's what it's mm -hmm. called. And that one, that one was not very popular, it was really like went really politically into the like the, the politics of the the universe of like the federation and stuff. Nobody Until wants that. Would it be popular? Yeah. Yeah, nobody wants that. Stay away from that. Don't do not make a movie like that. <laughs> the most popular topic in the world, politics. Yes. So I was thinking making it have Samus be alone most of the movie. Make it more of a thriller style movie. Just have her alone fighting aliens trying to take down the bad guys who are obviously like space pirates and stuff. And I think making it a thriller is definitely the way to go for a Metroid movie. So is this going to be an original story or an adaption of one of the games? So I was thinking having it basically the concept of the game, but have it as an original story. It's literally okay. just have like theme characters, like maybe her take down the pirates, the space pirates from the game. And have her shoot down the Metroids from the game. But it doesn't need to be based on, like, Metroid Prime 1 or Metroid Prime 2 or yeah. Zero Mission this or anything is, like that. This is purely an adaption, not a recreation. Exactly, an adaption. Okay. <laughs> and as who I'd want to play as Samus, because that's the only character I put in for casting, is the Emily Blunt. You know who Emily Blunt is? Yeah. I think she would be a really, really good pick for Samus. Because we've already see her, seen her play sort of a similar role in the movie Edge of Tomorrow. She yeah. played that kind of like spacey, you know, badass, badass kind of... Badass yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think she would be perfect as Samus. And she okay. even got the look, too. So, yeah. That's my, that's my pick, is make a Metroid movie with Emily Blunt. Alright. Uh, speaking of Emily Blunt... We can just keep on riffing off each other this whole Did podcast. you pick a movie with Emily Blunt? I did. Uh, <laughs> Diablo. Like the turn-based 
or is it tur- not turn based? Is no, get, it's a is it strategy? Two, right, it's a strategy no. RPG. Oh, it's a top down action game. Action. Oh action. yeah 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 yeah. I know it's really popular. Yes. Uh, if you can't tell, the, I've never played it. And this is a um, basically a recreation with a little bit of added bits into it to kind of flesh out the story a little bit more. Uh, Diablo has three characters you can pick from to play. The warrior, the sorcerer, and the rogue. Later on, they were like actually given names. So like the warrior is named Aiden, the sorcerer named is Jazareth, and the rogue is named Morina. Um, but synopsis wise, it follows the main, the first game. Okay. Letter by letter. Uh, actor wise, I have the warrior or Prince Aiden played by Henry Cavill. (laughs) He needs a new role after (laughs) losing Superman again. Uh, he's already got a role. He's in a new series for Warhammer. Sure. That's something that he is extremely passionate about and something i'm looking forward to because it's i'm no, getting into no superman primark. but you know i mean depends on if he's a primarch <laughs> anyways anyway. uh so henry cavill for the warrior uh loved him as Geralt, and i think he does a really good job in fantasy style settings so okay. yeah, that's, him being that's a, good a armor sword wielding warrior to try to like figure out what happened to his family I would like to see that. Okay. Then you have the Sorcerer Jazreth, played by Brian Tyree Henry. You say the name. Do you say Jazreth? I think female. Yeah, Jazreth is... Honestly, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. I just called him the Sorcerer back in the day. Uh, I just learned that he had a name. Well, you say Jazreth, and my brain is like, Jasmine. Yeah. Um... He is played by Brian Tyree Henry. Again, not sure if I'm even saying the middle name right. I apologize. I don't know who that is. Uh, He plays Lemon on Bullet Train. Never saw that. that. That's all I know him from. So, Well, fans out there might might know who he is. Yeah. Uh, And then we have the Rogue, who is Marina, played by Emily Blunt. Hey, here we go. You mentioned. Uh, Just have her hair red instead of uh, brown, like she usually is. Isn't That's she it. normally blonde? Uh, Emily Blunt? I mean, yeah, I don't Pretty know. Pretty sure she's, she's known blonde. as a blonde. Everything I've seen her in, she's had dark brown hair. Oh, I don't know. Um, but anyway, so then we go into King Leoric, who is somewhat the main bad guy. He's like the second main bad guy. Uh, played by Ethan Hawke. I know him. Wasn't he recently a Moon Knight? Yes, he was the main villain in Moon Knight. Right, that's who I thought uh, it was. He is a very powerful presence of an actor with very good dr- drama. Uh, and I think he'd be able to pull off the tragic story of King Leoric, the Madness King. Um, then we have Queen Isilla, Leoric's wife, who he beheads, um, played by Kate Blanchett. I know who that is as well. And, yep, yeah, she, again, I'm trying to pick two very powerful char- or actors it's to K- play Kate Blanchett, royal- she was the, uh, she was Thor's sister, right? In the Thor movies? Yes, she's Hell. Yeah. Hella. Hella. Um, then we have Albrecht, who is the youngest son of the king and queen, and the brother, younger brother of Henry Cavill's character, Aiden, um, played by Tom Holland. Gotta bring in Tom Holland somewhere. Yes. Where's uh, Where's the Rock? Is he showing up too? He is not. Actually, I don't think I picked him for anything. I'm surprised. Tom Holland, The Rock, Kevin Hart. Those are just like the staple actors of this, today's world. I might have. They're in I'm everything. Not entirely sure. <laughs> uh, but he is the character who gets possessed. He becomes the main bad guy, p- possessed by Diablo, the devil. Um. Then we go with Lazarus who is the corrupter of the king, the advisor, played by Jeremy Irons. Jeremy, that sounds super familiar. Uh, he was the main bad guy in Die Hard with a Vengeance. Oh, yes, 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 I know who that is. The brother of Hans Gruber. Yeah, he, he did a really good job in that movie. Yes, and the voice of Scar, and I really wanted a... Like, from Lion King? Yes. Oh, I had no idea he voiced him. That is super cool to know. 
yeah, I he it's one of his like best roles is just because his voice alone just brings out malignant intent. Yeah, so evil sounding. It is. It is, and that's kind of why I wanted him for Lazarus because I needed someone who just exuded darkness in that way, but also a disarmingness about him. You know, if if he hadn't passed away, you know who would have been a good voice. I don't know about. I don't know what these characters look like or anything, but uh, the guy who played uh, Saruman and uh, Count Dooku. What's that? Oh, doing? okay, uh, Christopher Lee, I think. That, yeah, yeah, it's him. Yeah, yes. he 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 was another character that just like he just spit like malicious yeah. intent kind of stuff. Yeah, I could see him actually replacing Jeremy Irons for this pick. That would be a good pick. Well, like I said, I don't know anything about this character. I just like just thinking voice looks wise. wise he just looks like an evil wizard. Like the oh, then that's perfect for Saruman. <laughs> yeah, he's an ar- he's supposed to be an archbishop who advises the king, and he just looks like an old guy that kind of looks evil. Yeah, <laughs> like it's very sad that he passed away. It is. Uh, then we got Deckard Cain, who it, he's kind of like the mystic of the franchise. He's the narrator for all of the games, uh, and he is. I picked Sam Elliott to play him. No, oh, I know who that is definitely. Uh, I needed a very iconic voice, and Sam Elliott's voice is probably, like, one of my all-time favorite voices. Yeah, he's a good voice. A very rich and deep voice. Then we have... This guy is... I literally picked him just so I could put the actor in for him. Oh, God. Uh, Griswold the Blacksmith. He is... He is in a lot of the games. He is a staple of the franchise. It's just, like... He's a mer- he's the merchant of the group. He's the mer-, mer like you sell him stuff. I picked Charlie Hunnam. Uh, Who's that for him? He played uh, in the Gentleman. He plays as Ray. He also played in uh, all that biking show where he was. No he's like idea. A biker. No idea. What you're I also about. played Robin Hood. There's been the how movies. many Robin Hoods? Now? Or not Robin Hood? Not Robin Hood. Uh, King Arthur. There's been how many King Arthur's now? The latest one. I never saw but, it. But, yeah, at best, I don't think you saw it. This is a character, or an actor I didn't think you would know. No, nah, I don't know um, who it is. But I really like him in movies, and I really, when I saw him, I was like, he could be the blacksmith, and possibly give him a bit more of a role into it. Uh, so that would be my, that would be my pick, Diablo. Diablo. I know it's a very popular franchise. It is. Looking forward to the next installment coming soon. So that brings me to my pick. Uh, number two is a game we all know and love, Skyrim. Okay. Have a Skyrim movie. Now, obviously Skyrim, it's going to be difficult to kind of put into a movie. Yes. But, uh... but I, have, I have thoughts. I have thoughts. Okay. It, it could be an original story loosely based on Skyrim. Like, lo- well, loosely based. To be fair, Skyrim is a location in the Elder Scrolls universe. Like, well, I even have so, in my notes that they can be loosely based on Skyrim, kind of like they did with Warcraft, how it was loosely based on Warcraft, the game. Yeah. Well, um, they but, just changed thinking elements. Yeah, but if they do try to make like one of the story quests, I was thinking like uh, maybe the main quest to defeat Alduin, or like the war between the Stormcloaks and the Imperials. There's a way you could adapt it if they want to go that route. Yeah. But uh, I think just an original story loosely based on Skyrim is probably the way to go. Like, so, just be the Dragonborn. And okay, just, so we are following the Dragonborn. Yes, still. yes, yes. So, okay. at, speaking of the Dragonborn, as for the actor to play the Dragonborn, obviously in Skyrim you are a custom original character that you create. Yeah. I actively avoided all of the games I well, normally uh, play because of that. Well, I saw a fan-made trailer on YouTube where they had Chris Hemsworth as the Dragonborn. And okay, it sense. actually worked pretty well. Like, have him wear the iconic Dragonborn helmet from the from the box art. Yeah. Have him go fight, you know, the dragons, take their souls, save the land. Thor, but instead of a hammer, he has a voice. That and he also could have hammers and and it'd be really cool to see them have like the, maybe Chris Hemsworth's character like 
go around defeating enemies. And, you know, the iconic thing of, of Skyrim is you can have any class, right? So maybe yeah. instead of him just having one weapon throughout the entire thing, like, his weapons will break and you're like, shit! And you have to, like, go grab something from, like, like He's kill an enemy, a, steal a weapon, take whatever he has kind of thing. More a master of arms than a specialist. Right. H have him just, okay. like, be slaughtering pe like people and then just taking their weapons. And then it's like, I'm going to use this now. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then, like, like you can have him just go, Vusoto! And just, like, knock down an entire, like, army or something. Okay, I'm seeing this. Uh, for any of you Skyrim players who picked orcs or any other other races, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Automatically Nord in this one. Yeah. Oh, hey, Nord is the standard race. It as is. messed well, up as that sounds, but it is, well, it is the, the standard race, race in Skyrim. Because the location <laughs> of Skyrim is like the birthplace of Nord. So. Well, not only that, but they have a, an entire war over like this is the Nord's land. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's because it's the, it is the homeland of the Nords. <laughs> I know. But I would love to see like them adapt, you know, the Kachik and the, the Argonians and have them have like some background characters and stuff. Yeah. Maybe he could form a party. I don't know. They don't really do that in Skyrim that often, but you could have him like, for the movie, have him form some you get your small party. Yeah, you could have, dude, imagine Lydia. <laughs> In the movie, just like, gotta do my, what the dragon lord like, says. <laughs> yeah, like I would. Love I'll it be if your shield and sword. The actress who they pick for that, they're like, she does an actually great job. And then the director's like, um, I'm sorry, no. Can you um, can you tone it down and maybe be a little bit more wooden? And like, you want me to do a worse job? <laughs> and of course, if you're Lydia. Anytime Chris Hemworth goes to attack an opponent, you just got to get in the way. Just walk yeah, right in like, front of your arrow. And, just die. Getting hit. and then just die because you jumped in front of an arrow. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. This game <laughs> Makes you want to so... play Skyrim again, right? <laughs> it does, which is so messed up. Like, what, how is that game so addictive? And dude, it's been out since 2013, and it's still getting remade for every console ever. Keep pumping it out. <laughs> I was on Nintendo, and I was looking at some of their deals, and it was like, the Nintendo Switch Special Special Ultimate Edition. I'm like, why? This has been ported on the Switch like four times. <laughs> is the Dragonborn the only character you casted for this? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. You didn't even try to pick a voice for Parthenax or any of the elders. Nah. <laughs> they can <laughs> producers can figure that out. <laughs> Hilarious. It wasn't hard enough to figure out a, a actor for this until I saw that video. <laughs> like you literally just said, you watched a YouTube video. Like, oh, I got this. That sounds great. <laughs> so that's my number two. What about you, bud? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so my neck, my number two is uh, actually okay. So I have to read the synopsis first. It is an Avengers-style franchise where each character gets their own movie until finally they all come together for the ultimate Nate, movie. We are not setting up an MCU for this, okay? Well, I am for this. Hunter the Reckoning. I don't even know what that is! I have talked about it numerous times on this podcast. You have? Yes. It was in, like, my favorite video games, Raceland. Oh, yeah. That did happen, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> so, and I, I, this is one of the ones where I was like, I don't know if he's going to know some of these. I only have four actors. I don't even know the game. <laughs> four playable characters. You have Esteban Cortez, my favorite character in the game, uh, called The Judge. And I, for the actor, I went with Diego Luna. Okay. Do you know who that is? Nope. Uh, he was in Rogue One. Okay. Uh, he played Cass Cassian Andor. He they just gave him a show on Disney Plus. So Andor. Andor. Yeah. Okay. That is him. Uh, shout, then, shout out to Give for Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> then we have Samantha Alexander, aka the Defender. Uh, I picked Rashida Jones for her. I know who that is. All right. The next one, I'm fairly certain you do know. Probably. Deuce Wyatt, the Avenger. Okay. Played by Carl Urban. Carl Urban. Oh, that's the guy who plays uh, 
uh, in the boys. Yes, butcher. Yeah. Uh, Deuce White is a very biker looking. And character. you just said you're making him into a superhero style movie. No, this isn't a su- no. You said the, an Avenger style thing. The format of it, like oh, each okay. character get gets their own movie, and then an ultimate movie combining all of them. Doesn't Carl Urban also play in another like really big series? He did before The Boys. I thought he played uh, it. He has been in MCU. He has been. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, who did he play in the MCU? He was the guy who worked for Hella and then got the machine guns. He was bald in that one. Oh, okay. The guy's like, I will die for honor and jumps out of the building shooting machine guns. Okay. Like, ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then he was also Judge Dredd. Maybe that's it. Um, and then the last one is Cassandra Chung, the martyr. Played by... Sh- and I apologize if I mess up this. I tried looking up how to pronounce this Oh, don't name. worry. You'll mess it up. Yeah, I probably will. <laughs> Shioli Katsuna. Uh, that sounds perfect. No idea. She played Yukio in Deadpool 2. Yukio. Oh, is that the but, chick who's just always uh, like, Hi there, Wade! Yeah, exactly. Yeah, her. Uh, she will play Cassandra Chiung, who is like the rich kid who... Like I think her father was a toy maker who owned a toy making factory, and so that that's it. She's the only dual wielder in the entire game. Okay. So that that is it. Uh, each one of those people will get their own movie. Oh, of course they and will. And then to so it will go into their own movie depicting on what they do in between the possessions of the town, because the town just keeps getting possessed by the same ghost. They really need to call the Ghostbusters for this. Um, <laughs> but, like, it's kind of like a it situation. Like, every certain amount of time, the ghost just takes over the town again. And they return to defeat the ghost and then leave and go off and hunt other supernatural beings. But they go separately. That's where you get other hunters from the, around the world. Kind of like a supernatural And thing. then Sam and Dean show up. And- exactly. Uh... Which would be sick is like a, <laughs> if they ever did do this and then was like, oh, DLC characters, Sam and Dean. I'd be like, yes. Uh, and they would kind of fit in it too. Like yeah. it is a very dark, supernatural, apocalyptic world that they live in. Damn it, Sam. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. So that that is my number two. I'm sorry for all those producers listening out there. I didn't realize Nate was going to make an MCU. So I apologize. Yep. The Hunter Universe. <laughs> All right, before I get to my number one, I actually have a few honorable mentions. I didn't... Now, these are games... A lot of these I don't think will ever happen, obviously. But my first one is Gears of War. I've, ne- I've only played the first game. I think the franchise is popular enough to get a live-action movie. I think the story is definitely there to make a movie. I'm surprised they haven't tried to make a Gears of War movie yet. But, you know. And, uh... Dave Batista is like the perfect right exactly next uh next one I have is God of War I've never played these games but I definitely think that it could be a nice brutal die killing kill 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 movie another Dave Batista <laughs> <laughs> hey he's getting his roles he is Good old uh, <laughs> the next one is a game that I absolutely love that you've never played and that is Horizon Zero Dawn Okay. I was gonna put it on my list, my list, but apparently Netflix is already making a TV series about it. So well, there you go. I guess I don't need to put it on this list. Yeah. And then the let the number my last honorable mention will never happen. It's such a long shot, like the biggest long shot ever, and that is the the, su- the Super Smash Bros. movie. Oh. We already have a live action Pikachu. We've got live action Sonic. You know, you just. Just keep adding stuff. Honestly, it'd probably be better animated, to that, be honest. But hey, that's actually, what they're going for, they're just going to make all of the animated movies separately with all of the characters from Smash, and then reveal after they're done, like, and all of this has been leading up to the Super Smash movie. You know, you know, honestly, I think it'd just be better off to make it animated at this point. Yeah. Have they made a Mega Man movie? Yes. They have? I, I think so. I like a live be. action Mega Man? I know that... I don't know about live action. Okay. I Maybe Mega Man should get the 
the Sonic and Pikachu Detective Pikachu treatment. I think they have. I might be thinking of Astro Boy actually. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about a Mega Man movie. No. Well, my number one. Do you want to do your number one first, or let me do my number one? Uh, you go ahead. Okay. My number one is a double-edged sword. It could either be super awesome, or it could be to the world's biggest flop. Like, okay. it's a movie that every, it's a game that everybody's been wanting as a movie. There's been lots of fan mo- trailers of it. Any guesses on what it could be? None whatsoever. What if uh, I said it's a Nintendo product? Even I don't play Nintendo products. <laughs> but you, everybody knows this franchise. It is the That's Legend the of one. Zelda. Zelda. Oh, Legend okay, yeah. of Zelda. That's a. It's a double edged yeah. sword. It could either be yeah. great. Or it could be terrible. <laughs> All right, so uh, I can just see the casting call. Out. Oh, okay, I've got so a cast. <laughs> we we need you to say yeah. <laughs> nope, too too high. We need you to go a little bit lower. <laughs> nope, too too low. We need just a little bit mid ground. That's the entire interview <laughs> <laughs> character. So for Zelda, like I said, I've seen lots of fan videos of them making their own versions of Zelda, and they can yeah. turn out pretty good. If if these low budget YouTubers can make pretty decent trailers, imagine what they could do with a high budget movie. Okay. And, and to be clear, you're talking live action. Live action. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I told you, it's a double edged sword. It could either go great or terrible. That's a. That is a <laughs> tough demand right there. I know, right? It would have to. It would have to be an original story instead of to try to copy one of the games. But I mean, most of the games are pretty simple. Link's the hero that saves Hyrule and stops the evil Ganon from getting the Triforce and saving the princess. It's pretty standard yes. Zelda stuff. And I'd love to see them go with a story-based, like, traditional game instead of trying to go with the, dy- the dystopian Hyrule theme like in Breath of the Wild. I want them to stick with, like, the, you know, the N64 style storyline where it's just like, you know, Link's... Oh, Majora's Mask. Well, I, I also don't want him to be a kid. It would be... I would want him to be the adult Link. Yeah. I mean, you could, if you want to do, you know, have a child actor That's come in and do the Sword of Time kind of thing. But I was thinking more along the lines of keeping it all adults and stuff. Okay. But yeah. It, what, what's your thoughts? <laughs> uh, I... Initial thoughts for a live-action Legend of Zelda movie is immediate flop. Yeah, uh, yeah. They could pull it off, though. Everybody thought Sonic was going to be a giant flop, okay? Okay, so, okay. Is it going to be a purely live-action, or is it going to be a mix like Sonic? Because that's the reason they pulled it off, is because... A mix. So, like, Ganon is going to be probably CGI. Okay. Again, it would be... S- super the reason i would say this would be super hard for that is because sonic is clearly from a cgi world that come or like his world looks like he's from it well i was thinking it could be more like a fantasy style movie yeah well okay my what i'm trying to say is uh sonic is not from the it's world another, that they yeah, show he's him from another dimension we know yeah where you're I don't think you're talking about doing that no in this no so the world although imagine a second to... movie where it's just link comes from his dimension to the modern world and you just pick it up pots yeah 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 just immediately being arrested for <laughs> disturbance of public like oh no but I was just thinking making a fantasy movie Legend of Zelda not I, I know that. I know I know right, like I said. Right. Huge before, flop or giant success? Oh. Before I continue down my train wreck of a thought. Um, I have casting, by the way. Yeah. Who is your cast? Because okay. that, I think, is what's going to determine this. Okay. Let's. T- I'm going to leave Link for last. <laughs> I only have three. It's the major three. Fair. I think Princess Zelda, Emma Watson. All right. Live action. Live action. It's going to be Emma Watson playing it's, the character. Yes. Not her voice. No. Okay. Then as for Ganon, I was thinking they could do what they kind of did with like Avatar, kind of like, you know, make their 
the CGI be like sort of his face kind of thing, but it'd be okay. more CGI with his voice. Would so it's be, gonna be realistic CGI. Yes, and I was thinking Idris Elba for Ganondorf. Okay. I, okay. And then Link. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, the the actor Evan Peters. You know who that is? He plays Quicksilver in the X Men movies. Okay, that would be uh, my link. Interesting pick. You know what? When I was looking at like what people thought on Reddit and stuff, a lot of people were saying Tom Holland, and I'm like, no, we no. don't want Tom Holland as Link. I was thinking Evan Peters would be a pretty decent pick, like. I don't know. He kind of looks like like I think a tiny bit like. Okay, so. All right, go down. Tell me how crappy my pick is. Go. I'm not. I don't think it's a crappy pick. I do think a Legend of Zelda movie would be good. I don't think live action would be the way to go. Well, I don't because... want to do an animated movie. They've done that in the '90s, and it turned out terrible. But did okay? They did it in the '90s, but was it to this? quality of the sonic movies and the no Pikachu movie? exactly that's what i'm saying you're talking about older animation styles <laughs> well yeah give it a modern makeover and i think it would be a i think you actually have a massive hit on this one okay the live action is where i think you're drawing the flop because so Link, you think doing an animated movie would be better yes give it the mario like what they're doing with mario right now Okay, yeah, that. I get, I could see that. Yeah, do a 3D animation, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I kind of agree with that. I kind of agree with that. Well, hey, I but do you it, like the choices for my voice actors then? Yeah. the Like I said, act or what I was going to say is the actors-wise, you picked, I think, spot on. Really, honestly, everybody but Link. Uh, oh, you don't like Evan Peters I as Link? I don't see Evan Peters as Who Link. Who would you pick as Link? He doesn't talk. It's, well... Link is a very tough character to pick for because now I always see him as a like short like little child okay. All right. almost. Real quick. Let's say we do animated. <clears throat> we're going your route. We're going to change it up, go your route. We do animated. Would yeah. we do what they're doing with the Mario movie? In the original Mario games, Mario just said, "Wahoo! Let's go!" Okie dokie. That yeah, that's stuff. been expanded on throughout the other games, though. But obviously, in the trailer, they've shown him like Mushroom yeah. Kingdom, and he's talking like he's doing full yeah. on sentences. Would we have Link just go hot, 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 or would we give him a speaking I, role? I think it would be the perfect opportunity to break video game history and reveal Link's voice. What if Link comes out and he's just like, "Hey guys, it's Link." Yeah, he, puberty hit him hard. Uh, <laughs> like, he's, he didn't do the Master Sword where he's from a child to an adult. He's just mid-stage Link. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he, he still looks like a child, but has the voice of an 80-year-old smoker. Like, <laughs> Come on, guys, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, 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 I think Evan Peters' voice would be very good. Okay. Um, but, like, as the voice. Looks-wise, I don't see... He's very... I think he's pretty tall. And I don't see Link being tall. Well, like you said, it, you're probably right. I'm probably wrong. Doing a 3D animation would probably be the smarter route. So yeah. if that's the case, then looks don't matter. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah, I, I would agree with your thing. We This would be the grand reveal of Link's voice. Hey, Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. The movie looks great. I'm holding back any... <laughs> issues with it until i see the movie because right. it that could be like out of con like who knows <laughs> well yeah that's my number one is i'm a massive fan of legend of zelda and yeah you're probably right 3d animation is probably the, the best way to do this to be honest you're you're right i see my my thoughts were i love like the lord of the rings stuff like that yeah having a fantasy style live action and movie that'd be great I see exactly where you're going with that too. Like I'm like, you know what that? Yeah, that sounds. But then the reason that falls down is Link. Like <laughs> Link, I cannot see Link as a realistic type of character. And then just having a float he, in there, just like going bobbing back and forth, like he does in the animations, talking. Yeah, like it's just like 
I can see Zelda. I can see Ganondorf. They, I can see them being pulled off in a more realistic tone. Link just now. I have something always childlike and fake about him. Now I have the most important question for the Legend of Zelda. If we're doing a live action movie, who voices? Who plays Tingle? Nick Kroll. <laughs> Nick Kroll. <laughs> no, no. So Tingle's always like. Mm. Just have him be Charlie Day. <laughs> so, no, be even better is have it be like live action Nick Kroll, but for, for some messed up reason, we voice over him with Michael Sarah. <laughs> yes, the Michael Sarah memes are real. <laughs> So yeah, that that would be the perfect singer right there. The body of Nick Kroll hey and guys, the voice of Mike. It's it's single. Um, yep. you know. I'm just here. <laughs> I'm gonna go float away now. <laughs> like, Have a great day. <laughs> I'm a <right>. fairy. <laughs> all right, what's your number one? <laughs> My number one is a wolf among us. Oh god. Why did I not su- why am I not surprised? Like, come on. Well, the reason is because I've actually had the casting for this for a very long time. Uh, so when you actually, this was, I was like, immediately I knew this one was going to be on this list. Of course uh, it is. But I did have to kind of create a little synopsis for it. That is something new. So the synopsis is one day a mysterious letter appears in the mail for some of the residents of Fable Town, leading them to face some of Fable Town's darkest secrets. Uh, Oh, doesn't give way too much of the movie or anything. It's a pretty basic synopsis. The actors and characters I picked are the ones who receive the letter. So, okay. the, like, you'll still have uh, other characters in the movie. Like, they'll still meet and talk to other people. These are going to be the focus points, though. Uh, you got Bigby Wolf, obviously. Uh, played by Kit Harrington from Game of Thrones. You might know him as uh, the Dark or the Black Knight from the Eternals movie. Yeah, I kind of like erase that movie from my memory. Yeah, well, uh, his role he, wasn't his role like so small that. Well, he was the boyfriend of Cersei. Sure. And then uh, he was like, so your boyfriend was like an Adonis, like Superman kind of guy. Kinda. Yeah, after about the two hour mark of that movie, my eyes kind of glazed over. Understandable. Uh, then we got Snow White, played by Chantel Van Santen. No idea. Uh, the wife of Butcher, Becca Butcher. Oh, okay. I know who that is. All you'd have to do is make her hair dark. That's it. Um, I think she'd be a pretty good Snow White, especially a Snow, uh, Snow White from the Fables now, uh, this, franchise. Now, this game is based on all, like, the fairy tale stuff, right? Yes. So uh, where, but- when, does, when does Sora join up? Sora is actually in another universe. Oh, okay. Looking for yet another Disney princess. Key to the heart. <laughs> uh then or he's, you know, stuck behind a door that he can't open yet. Um Okay. So then we got Rose Red, who is Snow White's sister. Uh played by Mackenzie Davis. She was Grace in Terminator Dark Fate. Okay. I like that movie. Uh, do you remember who Grace was? Yep. Okay. Forget all the uh, haters. I love that movie. I was a little afraid about that one because I wasn't sure if you would remember who Grace was. I love that movie, dude. Dark Fate was awesome. I don't care what and the haters say. That movie is great. So I was wrong earlier. I do have Dwayne Johnson. Oh, come on. on. <laughs> but only because physically he is perfect for this role. Uh, he just has to grow out his must or his goatee. And That's, he's perfect. I feel like you could just sneeze and it would just grow. Yeah. Uh, Bluebeard, who is a notorious, like, massively built pirate with a goatee and a gold earring who turns super rich uh, because he sells all of his loot when he comes over to our world. Played okay. by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, boy. Then we've got Jack of Fables. Jack of Fables is literally every single Jack character in any story. Uh, it's the same guy. So, he is played by Ryan Gosling. Oh, okay. Because Jack is notoriously known to be, like, the handsome blonde dude. 
That that is literally what they have called him in the comics. And when he goes to the movie or when he goes to Hollywood to tell his stories and make them into movies, I I want to say they likened him to a Ryan Gosling or a Ryan Reynolds. Uh, then we've got Beauty from Beauty and the Beast, played by Rosamund Pike, uh, who was in Gone Girl. And then the last character, Beast from Beauty and the Beast, played by David Harbour from Stranger Things, Jim Hopper. Don't know who that uh, is. He's also Santa Claus in The Violent Night. Never got to see it. Oh, I thought you said you went to go see that. No, I wanted to uh, go see that. He's also Hellboy in the latest Hellboy remake. Never saw that. Watch, bring it racing. <laughs> Gotta get you to start watching some of these movies. I, I asked uh, I, I off said, Nate, let's go see Violent Night. And you're like, Meh. I was busy with family stuff. No, not my fault. Could have just gone and seen it. Anyway, that that is my number one pick. Okay. And that the, is the cast. The most unshocking reveal of number one ever. Right. So I looked on um uh, on our Discord and our Twitter and Facebook, got no comments. No, no, nobody commented. But I did ask some people at my work, and I got three people that gave me suggestions. Okay. Uh, Clarence at my work, he said the the video game Contra. Okay. I I could I could see that for the, the old yeah. '90s Contra game. Yeah. Then we had John from my work who said the game Bioshock. He'd like to see a okay, Bioshock man. movie. Oh, and that would be such a upsetting movie too. But a great like, like just the aesthetic would be amazing if they pulled it off. And I'm already coming up with like cast members and whatnot. Like that'd be sick. And then the Chris at my work said the game Time Lord. Now I'm gonna give a little background because I'm sure you don't know what that is. I didn't hear. I didn't know what this Time Lord was released in 1991. It's a side scroller warrior fights aliens through time. Aliens want to change history to make the humans easier to conquer. So basically, ah. you go throughout time defeating aliens because aliens want to kill the humans. So they're like, time travel to make it easier to take down the humans. Saint Row 4, the ending. Nice. So he suggested that because he thinks it would be a really cool alien yeah. shoot em up movie. Uh, I mean, Time Cop was a pretty good movie franchise, so I feel like this one would be pretty good. So yeah, other than that, I have nothing else to talk about on the podcast. Nice. Got, got anything else you'd like to say? Um, not really. Like, okay. Actually, some of the ones I mentioned, while they would make some pretty good movies, I would love it absolutely if they just made a series about some of them too. Uh, some like TV series? Yeah, like Conquer's Bad Fur Day could easily be an HBO. Di a exclusive. Disney Plus original, yeah. No, not Disney Plus. <laughs> uh, definitely not Disney Plus. <laughs> Put uh, it right there next to like, like uh, le next to like, one of the Disney movies or something. Frozen. What next to Frozen? <laughs> uh, what? There was one of them that recommended a holiday special that was just. Oh, we actually mentioned in the holiday holiday special that we did the Sword Art Online holiday special. Yeah, yeah. Don't watch that if you want to feel good. <laughs> but yes, some of these I think would make a really good series like. A Wolf Among Us would make a great detective show. Uh, Dead Space would make a great uh, movie for those who are kind of chomping at the bit for more sci-fi, Firefly kind of movies. So, yeah. Cool. That, cool. That's it. Well, thank you guys for listening to the podcast. If you uh, want to see, keep up with everything we're doing and keep uh, and, like give out suggestions and stuff, Come join our Facebook, uh, you not YouTube, <laughs> our Facebook, Discord, and Twitter. It's all in the link tree in the description below, and we'll uh, see you guys in the next episode. See you later.